Hey guys, Brian from Brian Bow is here. Happy New Year. I can't believe we made it to 2024. I don't know where the hell all the time goes. Today I just wanted to give you guys a brief update on what I've been up to and the plans that I have for the year ahead regarding this channel and my boas. And typically I release a video on December 27th, which is, which is actually the anniversary of the Brian Boas YouTube channel back in 2019. I didn't get to that obviously for a number of reasons this year, so I just kind of wanted to give you guys an update in this video. And we're actually now into 2024. And so the first thing I wanted to discuss, you probably noticed I haven't been releasing many videos lately. I had, you know, a lot of plans for December, but as far as the videos, but you know, life intervened and uh, I only released a few videos. So is I probably discussed before in some of my other videos, I'm not a full-time boa breeder. I have a day job uh, and I've gotten much busier with my day job lately. I, for quite a few years when I was first starting this channel, I was working from home 100% of the time because of the pandemic, but that's not the case anymore. So I commute into work several days a week. And just in general, I've just been more busy. So unfortunately, I haven't had the time that I've had in the past to devote to the channel. And so um, regardless of that, um, I am planning to keep the channel going. You know, I will release videos as time permits. You know, I'll say a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But overall, I would say that my year in 2023, as far as bow breeding, it was good. It wasn't spectacular. I would say that it wasn't my best year ever, but I had some nice litters. And, you know, overall, I'm happy with what uh, my, my progress in 2023, you know, learned some lessons that I am applying to the 2024 breeding, which is going on as we uh, as I make this video and I will release a video in the near future going into a lot more detail about my breeding so you know stay tuned for that but as far as this year's breeding um, I had some nice litters I'll show you guys some of the babies first I well I just wanted to show you this is a branchia a female from Michael Beach a 2020 female um, doing really well getting bigger and she's not breeding this year probably won't be next year I might breed her sister next year I'm not sure um, or I might wait until the following year. As far as my breeding in 2023, one of the highlights was a litter of Argentine boas that I produced. And this is actually one of them. This is actually not a hold back. I held back three of them. I still have a few available. This is one of them. They're all males. The um, reason I grabbed this one rather than the holdbacks is they're all pretty much identical. These guys are really similar. I can't tell the difference unless I look at the card. Just wanted to show you guys one that uh, you could add to your collection. Argentine boas are one of my favorite locality boas and they're the first boa that I bred back in 2005. And it'd been quite a while since I had bred these. My last breeding before this year was in 2015. And so I'm really happy to have produced this litter. And these guys are actually, the mother of the litter is one of my babies from um, 2015. From my original, I had my original pair came from Nerd of all places back in the late 90s. And uh, they unfortunately, the original pair passed away a few years ago. They were, you know, around 20 years old each. Um, this is a, you know, grandchild of the original pair. The father of this litter is a Max Pink animal that I got from Bob Guerriere that's really beautiful looking. and. Just really happy with these babies and they're doing real well growing nicely you know eating frozen thawed with no problem just you know great pet boa if you're looking for an argentine boa another highlight in 2023 was having a couple litters of suriname true red tails and i'm really proud of these since this is now uh 10 years of uninterrupted breeding of true red tails going back to 2014 when i had my first litter of these Suriname red tails and you know I've produced them every year since then want to continue the streak got quite a few pairs going right now with some which look really promising um, but we'll have to wait till the summer to see what baby red tails are going to arrive but I had this litter of my second litter of 2023 which was just phenomenal possibly my best Suriname and best true red tail litter of all time. It was a cross between my two main bloodlines, my Picasso and my P 
Prometheus bloodline. This is one of the females, just phenomenal looking animal. Love the contrast and markings and color of these guys. Uh, you know, these have been in development over several generations, so just really happy with the results. This is actually a whole back. I do have a few siblings of these animals, of this animal that are still available. I also have some other Surinams. I still have a few, just a, a, you know, I think I'm down to about five or six animals from 2022. These are now about a year and a half. So if you're looking for something that has a little bit of size. And then I also have a few 2023 animals, including some from this litter. But I'll be excited to see what uh, is gonna be born this summer as far as true red tails. And you know, hope to continue offering the absolute best in true red tail boas that's available to hobbyists today. In addition to my true red tails, I was really happy to produce several litters of dwarf boas. I think next to the true red tails, dwarf boas are probably my next most uh, frequently produced group of animals. This is a crawl key female born here in July. And I had the litter of crawl key as well as a surprise late season tar humara litter born in September. Uh, I'm Right now I have paired up tar humara, crawl key and cocker key. So hopefully fingers crossed we'll have some more of these beautiful dwarf boas available, uh, you know, this summer, some more babies born. But I really like these dwarf boas since they have all of the great boa constrictor behaviors in a much more manageable pint size package. If you're looking for something that's not going to get quite so big as, you know, if, uh, a non-dwarf boa constrictor. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention about 2023, it was notable, notable because I kind of focused my breeding efforts. I let go of a few projects that I really wasn't getting as much fulfillment out of. You know, I ended up rehoming some of my adult breeder animals, including my Paraguana Peninsula boas, my North Brazilian red tails, and my Bolivian boas. And it was a really tough choice. But, um, you know, as I've gone, get more and more experience doing this either you just have to kind of focus because i've been holding back a lot of animals and uh, i'm not going to be able to hold back as many animals going into the future many of these holdbacks are getting to the point where they need bigger cages and i have a limited amount of space as well as time so it just made sense for me to focus my breeding a little bit more on fewer projects and let some of these animals go you know to other breeders where hopefully they'll um, be in a better position to really reach their reproductive potential and to hopefully you know offer offspring from those animals so that the, li the lions can continue uh, for the future so hobbyists will have these great animals and it's always hard and I get you know bonded to all of these snakes but they're in really good hands you know some of you who have them might be watching uh, you know, some of you guys have been putting videos of these snakes, so it's always great that I can see on social media where some of my former animals have ended up. It, you know, just makes me feel really good about the whole uh, process. But in the future, like I said, I'll be kind of more focusing a little bit more on the projects that I just get the most fulfillment out of, um, which tend to be the ones that I'm the most successful at as well. But uh, the crawl keys, I've got quite a few of these growing up as future breeders. And I intend to produce, you know, at least the dwarf boas and the true red tails as long as I'm, I'm able to, you know, continue this operation. So those were some of my favorite babies born in 2023. Thought I'd grab this one. This is a 2021 baby, actually. Coldback Suriname red tail that I'm growing up. <clears throat> Just to give you something nice to look at when I say my you know, concluding remarks for the video. I just briefly wanted to say a little bit about where I think my channel's going. And you know, prior to this, I just wanted to kind of remind you guys, I started the channel actually four years ago in late 2019. And for the first year and a half or so, I was just really into it. And I was releasing you know, at least three videos a week on a regular schedule and had a lot of ideas, was able to make videos centering on different types of locality boas, you know, with kind of more in-depth reports about each boa and the care and, you know, natural history of that type of boa. And, uh, you know, of course I ran out of ideas because, you know, I only have about a dozen or so, maybe 15 different types of locality boas. 
and there's only so many videos you can make and I realized pretty quickly that YouTube is really about repetition and it's not at all about creativity because there's really only maybe a dozen different videos of, of you know, all topics on YouTube. Everything else is just kind of a variation of you know, that, the standard uh, format of these videos. And um, I also noticed pretty quickly that people only watch new videos. And when I was starting the channel, I, in, I intended it to be a reference for people that wanted information primarily about locality boas, but about boas in general. They could just go watch a video and they could get the information. I've realized though that people in general don't watch old videos and mostly they just watch the new videos. You make a video, you put all the time and energy into it and generally speaking it gets a lot of views the first 24 hours. The second 24 hours it gets some views but it kind of tapers off. And then going out three or four days, your views are basically bottoming down. And you know, over the history of the videos, of course, there's some that are really popular and periodically people keep watching them. But the majority of videos, they only get a very small trickle of views after the first few days. And um, a lot of people on YouTube have this idea, and unfortunately it's somewhat true, that you just have to continue to make these videos in order to be successful. And there are many channels that release videos every day, and some even several times a day, and that's how they're successful. Personally, I don't have the time for that, and it just wouldn't be really worth anything for me to just continue to make videos for the sake of making videos. And that's what kind of happened when I was about a year and a half into it. I had just had enough of making videos just for the sake of making videos and you know some kind sometimes I would just kind of force myself and go through the motions just so I could continue on my uh, uploading schedule but then ultimately I decided it's just not worth my time because I could spend the time into something more productive and along on the same time I just got busier and busier with my job going back to the office and my boas because I've been kind of ramping up my breeding over the last few years and got more and more projects going you know as well as managing all of the business aspects and shipping of baby boas and communications with potential buyers etc so it's just uh, always a lot of stuff on my plate that I have to do. not to mention my family life and just maintaining my house in general plus I have other interests besides snakes that I like to do sometimes so anyway um, after I was on YouTube for about two years or so I really started to get burned out I went down to a every or twice a week posting schedule you know kept that up for maybe about a year or so and then at that point I kind of decided well there's no point for me to post videos unless, number one, I really have something meaningful to say that people can v benefit from. You know, that's not exactly the same as what I said before. Uh, number two, I have the time to make the video. And then number three, I have the motivation because a lot of times you just don't want to do this and it's like very draining. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, I would just go through the motions sometimes, but ultimately I said, why am I doing this? I mean, there's so many other things I could do that are going to be more productive and fulfilling and that's kind of what, kind of what I decided on and so the last year or so I've I don't even know what my video release count I've been releasing videos maybe about once a week but then I've had some lags where I didn't release a video for a few weeks um, of course when you don't release videos it gets harder and harder to make them and I've been meaning to make this video for at least the last few days. It just, you know, didn't happen because of other things that I've been doing. Um, so anyway, I, I, I hope the channel will continue to be valuable and I will continue to release novel, interesting, informative content that you guys find valuable. Um, but I'm not, I, I can't say that I'm going to release X number of videos a week or anything like that. Basically I release videos when I have a really good thing to say and time to get it onto the uh, onto film or you know to the digital sensor so as the case may be. At this point in my YouTube career I've released almost 500 videos which is kind of mind-boggling to think about all of those hours and hours uh, filming them. Of course some are going to be a lot better than others 
Um, but if you have a question about boas, there's a pretty good chance I've explored that often in quite a bit of depth. If you go and just do a search for the topic and Brian Boas, chances are you'll be able to find a video that covers exactly the information you're looking for. If you don't or you know you have something that I haven't uh, covered, feel free to send me a suggestion. I'm always looking for new suggestions for new videos, things that you want to hear about, um, and it helps me with making new videos. Uh, so please send those, keep the comments coming. Also, I wanted to thank everybody. Some of you guys have been with me since I started the channel four years ago, and I really appreciate your support. Without your support, this channel wouldn't exist. Uh, many of you guys have given me really, really nice comments, and often when I'm kind of feeling bad about the channel or you know not happy about you know where it's been going, I just read the comments and this channel is, at least some of the videos, are, are helpful and informative to some people. And they, some people seem to really appreciate the advice and information that I'm getting out there. So that really means a lot to me when you uh, share your feedback with me. Anyway, as I mentioned, I'm going to have an update video in the not too distant future on my current breeding. I've got lots and lots of pairs this year. Uh, so far, things look pretty good as far as the, the, uh, the courting activity and some of the breeding activity. I even got a few females that seem like they might be gravid. Of course, I'm not going to tell you which at this point because I don't want to jinx myself. Uh, but it should be a pretty good year uh, for babies. So I hope to have a lot of babies in late spring and summer on the way that I can share with you in future videos. So I wish you guys all the best in 2024. Thanks again for all your support. Please reach out with any feedback you might have and enjoy your boas.